I love that idea. I'm definitely going to create a vlog on self-sabotage. But I bet that JP Sears and Jay Shetty have probably already done it with better production value. Yeah, forget it. What's the point? Whether or not you consider yourself a creative person, we are all creative powerhouses. It sounds so cool. Our minds are consistently concocting plenty of ideas, scenarios, and impulses that all play a very prominent role in the life that we live. That's the truth, baby. But what about those of us that struggle with steering those thoughts in a direction that is helpful towards what we'd ultimately like to accomplish? Yeah! We may live in a world where we feel we need to focus on our competition and what we are doing and how it stacks up against what others are doing. But in reality, the biggest competitor that we have operates within each of us. Here's some of what I found to be the most common ways that we tend to sabotage ourselves and what we can all do to get out of our own way. Give me the good stuff! Self-sabotage tactic number one is to overthink. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of scenarios and situations where thinking on things extensively can prove incredibly beneficial. The issue is that the number of those circumstances is far outweighed by the number of times that we opt to overthink on things that don't require that. I'm guilty as charged. One second we're excited about a new idea, and a mere few minutes later we find ourselves entrenched in three worst case scenarios, two of which have a 0.001% chance of ever actually occurring, and we've sold ourselves on the idea that we shouldn't even bother in the first place. That's my specialty. A great solution to this is to actually practice journaling. I personally like to follow the protocol outlined in the infamous book, The Artist's Way, which involves creating morning pages, but taking any amount of time out of every day can actually work wonders in allowing your mind to dump out these overthoughts move past them and into what you actually want to do without letting them sabotage you in the first place. Everybody's doing it. Self-sabotage tactic number two is comparison. You've likely heard me harp on this in the past, but in our social media driven world, comparison has never been more prevalent. With just a few swipes or scrolls, we can easily compare ourselves to hundreds, if not thousands of other people, many of which are portraying their lives inaccurately on these popular platforms. Maybe I'm not good enough. Two great ways to combat this form of self-sabotage are one, to spend less time on social media, and two, to actively choose and challenge yourself to celebrate rather than compare yourself to the accomplishments of others. For example, I could quite easily look at someone like Jay Shetty, whose content largely falls under the same umbrella as mine and see that he's getting millions of views on everything that he creates versus the hundreds or thousands that I tend to get and allow myself to feel down because of that. But I can also look at his accomplishments, including his very recent and awesome appearance on The Ellen Show and be happy for him and see that he is actually living proof that there is an audience for the content that I'm choosing to create. Self-sabotage tactic number three is to distract. As I mentioned off the top, we are all creative powerhouses, but one of the most common ways that we love to closet that creativity is by consistently distracting ourselves from acting upon it. We are all addicted to our smartphones to a certain extent, and the average American receives over 45 notifications per day, so being and feeding that addiction has never been easier. Put the phone down. So far too often, before a great idea gets the opportunity to fully form, we quickly just go back to our habitual distractions of picking up our phone or turning on the TV or turning on any platform that has such a bevy of content that is actively looking to capture our attention. A great solution for this is to challenge yourself to set aside time in every single day that you classify as no tech time. Whether it's you sitting with yourself indoors or getting out in nature without your phone, challenge yourself to experience this and reacclimatize yourself to what this actually feels like. And you may be pleasantly surprised what it leads to in terms of overcoming self-sabotage. No doubt my mind. For more brutally honest content designed for those who actually want to change, be sure to check out my most popular video of all time up here. To be an awesome person, be sure to like and comment down here, as well as subscribe over here, and to hit the bell to make sure you find out about every new video as it comes out. And to get my free ebook on five simple daily hacks for a genuinely happier life, be sure to check out the link in the description.